Julie, who was leaving a gay bar and was chased down a cab in the boulevard and pulled into a fast food restaurant parking lot so that there would be people around. And she was beaten. And it was unreported. And the police didn't think it was a hate crime. And now I stand here for the two soldiers and the two other victims and women who were, who were beaten also. And my council and my mayor wants me to believe that it isn't a hate crime. And I want them to know that we stand here united today because this is the right thing to do. That we stand for all of our citizens. That we stand for the love and community that Colorado Springs has in our hearts. Not their hated intolerance. Not their perception that we are not created equal. We need to do some education about what being an inclusive city really means. Amen. Yes. Yes. Dr. Martin Luther King has famously, famously said that, the, that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And I don't know what we need to do to convince our city leaders that when any one member of our community, especially people who are serving in the military, are attacked, it is the right and just and good thing for them to stand up and to speak out against it. It is common human dig dignity and decency to do so, and I don't know what else we can do but s simply go to them and ask, will they stand up for, ju for justice in our community, or will they sit idly by while innocent people are attacked? Mayor Bach, America is watching your decision and leadership on what goes here today. If Dr. Martin Luther King were here today, he would say something like this. Somewhere I read that all men are created equal. Here, here. That document, that national treasure does not say all men except for black people, all men except for Jewish people or women or gay people. It says all men are created equal in this country. Our nation was founded upon that concept and that principle. My name is Chuck Bader and I served four years in the United States Marine Corps. I put my life on the line to defend liberty, to defend the rights of all people. When I signed my document of enlistment, I did not choose to put in exclusions for gay people, black people, Jewish people, Hispanics. I signed up to defend the rights of this country as Americans. Yes, sir. Our country has learned over two centuries ago that when you simply choose to take the word people away from someone's description, you dehumanize them. We have learned that you cannot put people in a certain category and treat them not as people. We need to have Mayor Bach step up. Because what's going to happen, Mayor Bach, is you're going to make two decisions. Number one, you're either going to sign the resolution to denounce this hate crime against people, or if you choose not to sign this resolution, by default, you are endorsing hate crimes against people, whether they're gay or they're straight. You, ethically, will have some responsibility if you open the paper next week or if you open the paper next month and you see this happen again. Because you are sending a clear message to the citizens of Colorado Springs that it is now open season on gay people. Right. There's been a hate crime committed. A mayor does not stand up against that. Therefore, what are the citizens supposed to think? They're supposed to think, no problem. My mayor, the leader of the city, says, no problem. If I see a gay person and want to commit a crime against them, the mayor says, no problem. Right. Mayor Bach, keep this in mind. Political aspirations aside, personal beliefs aside, you are acting in this capacity as the leader of Colorado Springs. And your decision will affect the citizens of Colorado Springs. Contemplate your choice very deeply because your decision could hurt people in the future. And we are here to do what we can to make sure that does not happen again. We 
are here as the citizens of Colorado Springs on the steps of your house at City Hall saying, this will not stand. And we are asking you specifically and directly with this resolution to sign off and send a message that will be seen by our nation and that will be adhered to by the citizens of our city to say no more. And in closing, I ask you to remember this, Mayor Bach. All that is needed for evil to prevail is for good people to stand by and do nothing. Thank you. On behalf of Citizens Project, we want to thank the Democratic Party for organizing this. And we recognize that this, this, issue, this issue transcends party lines. And this, this issue impacts our entire community. I hope that today and every day, we can reach across those lines that divide us, but we can work together, we can build bridges, so that we have a safe and diverse community. It's really hard to attract young people to come to Colorado Springs when we're an intolerant community. It's really hard to be a cool city if we're an intolerant community. We encourage all parties and all of our elected officials to come together to build those bridges, to have the dialogue, and to make our city diverse, tolerant, and safe. Thank you. The reason why I'm here is because the vast majority of my constituents feel so oppressed that they don't hardly ever come out of their homes, much less find themselves on the steps of City Hall. And you know why that, that is? because this is the city of intolerance. There are many places in the United States where transgender people can walk forth from their dwelling places and not feel the stigma that has been placed upon us here in this city. And it's a shame. The people who were victimized in this most recent hate crime here in Colorado Springs, uh, it was said that the altercation was precipitated because one of the attackers had an issue with how one of them was dressed. I don't know if the person was transgender, maybe they were, maybe they weren't. But I'm telling you one thing, what that means is that if I had been there on that very same evening, they would have attacked me. And you know what? That is not acceptable. I'm the executive director of the Colorado Springs Pride Center. There are about 20 to 40,000. There's about 20 to 40,000 gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people in the Colorado Springs area. Some of them choose to fight for equality by holding a sign in a parade. Some write letters, some sign petitions, and others write blogs. Some talk to the media and take on City Hall. No matter which way you choose, of all those things that I just mentioned, there's one common thread, and that's no longer being silent and making a statement that I will not stand for discrimination and hate crimes in the Colorado Springs area. Now I've spoken with a number of the city council regarding the mayor's refusal to sign a pride proclamation. The city council as a whole refusing to sign a proclamation. The horrible hate crime that happened 10 days ago. And there's one thing that I remember them all saying. It was how many emails were flooding their email boxes. It's not the point that there are hundreds of emails coming into their boxes every day. It's where they are coming from. They're coming from Colorado Springs. They're coming from Denver. They're coming from other parts in Colorado. And from now, what I understand, they're coming from all over this nation. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. That tells me one very important thing. There is a growing number of people that will not stand for and are upset about the silence coming from Colorado Springs and the lack of equality. Now it's important that leaders, both private and public, make a statement against hate. It's important that leaders denounce the promotion of discrimination. It's vital that our leaders support equality. It's very important that our leaders do not remain silent. 
Hate is a learned behavior, just like equality is a learned behavior. Someone teaches you this. In an example, I read a comment in the Gazette's blogs. We don't need special laws on the books for special people. If people would keep their personal lifestyle to themselves and not on public display, there wouldn't be a problem. Wow, that was written just a couple of days ago here in Colorado Springs. Would a proclamation be nice? Yes, why? Because it sends a message. Is that the most important thing that I want? Not necessarily. I want equality. Nothing more, nothing less, just equal. Thank you. And what I want to say to Councilman Lee and to every other councilman, I don't know where they're getting this idea that this is a partisan issue. It's a human rights issue. In New York, it was four Republican senators who put this over the, the top in New York and allowed for uh, gender for uh, same-sex couples. It was Republicans who spent most of the money to get that bill passed in New York. And why? Because one after the other they said their nephew, their mother's cousin, they all had family members. This is happening family by family communities are changing. It isn't partisan. It's a family values issue. Yeah. It was the log cabin Republicans who made the military stand up and say, repeal, don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. The Democrats did not take the lead on that. I wish we had. So when we go in there, don't let them say this is a partisan issue. That is baloney. That's an excuse for them to, to, to try to stay on the sidelines. This is a family issue. It's a family values issue.